Thank you, Peter. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess just first of all, just kind of the simple one, which is what does Jackie Robinson Day mean to you? Uh, it means it's a tremendous honor, first of all, to have been able to wear this wear the number in honor of Jackie. But for him to have paved the way and what he went through to let players like myself and people of color have an opportunity to play this game at a high level, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous honor. It's a great day. Alex? Which you were wearing the number, obviously, the night that Stephen <coughs> Clinton was here and Commissioner Seelig announced the full-time retirement of the number. Did you have an inkling, like, when you got to the ballpark that night, was there any kind of buzz that they were considering doing what they did to retire the number? And were you flabbergasted if, if you didn't know? I didn't have any idea about it, but I thought, uh, I knew it was big when the president was here and all of his security and the security we had to walk through to get into the stadium, but I didn't grasp how big it was until that happened when the state, Shea Stadium was full and they announced the retirement. I was like, oh my. I looked at Jay, I think I looked at Jay or maybe somebody in the dugout said, I'm probably not gonna be able to wear this number on anymore. But thank you, I was grandfathered in, so, and that was that was a tremendous honor. And to have Mrs. Robinson there, that was, it made it even more special. Did you get to know her or speak to her at all? I spoke to her quite a bit over the years, and, it's a, and I hear she's gonna be here today. So, I mean, she's 101 maybe, 100, Two, somewhere around there, but I hear she's going to be in the house today. Keith? Uh, Butch, I know you, you've studied and wrote a paper on Jackie Robinson. As you have gone through this journey, how much have you learned that maybe we don't know about Jackie's life and his story? How much you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's interesting you might have found out. There's, I mean, there's just, it's just everything he went through. I mean, I don't know if players today or even myself could have done what he did. I mean, it's a special talent, not just a talent to be able to play at a high level, but for what he experienced on a daily basis of going to hotels and not being able to eat with his teammates and just going through the rigor more of everyone being against him. I mean, that's that's ultimate there. I don't think I could have done it. I don't, I don't, my mentality was not that his mentality he had. Order with you, Ed. You mentioned talking to Rachel Robinson quite a bit over the years. What were those conversations like or anything like that? Oh, it's just really just getting to know her a little bit more and under, knowing her family a little bit. But, I mean, she really doesn't say much. She's really soft spoken. And, I mean, just to be in her presence of knowing that Jackie's presence is right there with her is enough for me. I mean, just to be able to hug her and help say hello and how you doing is that's quite a bit. Dan? But you talked about uh, wearing 42 in his honor and now players can't do that. Is that something that's lost a little bit or do you, do you think it's worth it to have 42 retired? I don't, I don't think it's lost because there's a Jackie Robinson day, but I mean, Instead of having one one or two, maybe three players throughout Major League Baseball wearing it, everybody's wearing it for the day. And I think that's a that's a huge accomplishment and honor in itself. Manny? When you wore the number before its retirement, was it an honor of Jackie? Or what did the number mean to you? Oh, it was definitely an honor. I, I had told myself if I ever made it to professional baseball from high school that I would try to wear the number 42 and Everything clicked and everything went together and I get to New York and I'm able to wear the number and then it was just Makes you play a little bit harder, but it's 162 games still so it's a lot but No, I, I loved it. The Mets were great to me and let me have the number and be able to wear the number Peter on the left Given that it, Jackie played in New York Obviously there are some ties between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Mets like does that make it even more special, I guess, that you were able to, to honor him in that way, with that tie? It's always special. I mean, just to know, and with him being with Brooklyn, it, it made it even more special. But, you know, just to be able to put the number on my back to get the okay to wear it and then have Mrs. Robinson's blessings to wearing the number, it, I mean, 
there's not much more you can ask for. Playing at the professional level is the highest level, but to get something like that bestowed on you is, it makes it that much more special. Howie? Coach, I know you're coaching your son, and as you look at where baseball is now and the efforts that they've tried to make to encourage more African Americans to eventually play major league baseball since a wider gap than it was 20, 30 years ago, do you sense they're making progress? Do you see progress, or do you think there's still a significant amount of ways you can go? Well, there's a you, there's always more you can do. I, I think it's just tough for for the African American kids because it's gone. The travel ball has destroyed little league baseball, and monetary wise, a lot of families can't afford to do it. And that's what's that's what's hurt. That that that's the gap between baseball right now. But it, they've made a lot of progress in going forward. But it's just I don't know if you can stop that travel ball deal right now. Travel ball is taking over the world of little league sports. You also find that kids, regardless of whether they're African American or not, are less enthused about playing little league because they see it as leaving them short of if they're not good enough to play on a travel team? Do you, do you think we're losing younger kids who feel intimidated because maybe, as I say, they're just not good enough to play travel ball? Well, the, <laughs> and I think what it, it, I, I wouldn't say a kid is not good enough if you haven't tried a kid or seen a kid play, but the, the gap between the experience level between travel ball and the kids <laughs> that aren't getting to play, it's a big gap. It's a big, because those kids are playing diff, tough competition every week. And then you have rec teams that aren't really playing anyone. So I think that's what drives the kids off because they're afraid of failure right now. And that, that's what I, 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 as I tell all my kids that I coach when I'm coaching them, you're gonna fail seven out of 10 times and you're gonna be successful. So you have to have the mentality that you're gonna fail seven out of 10 times and you, it's not good, but your mom and dad can't go fail at their job seven out of 10 times and be <laughs> successful. So that's a, it, I work on a lot of the men, men, mental part, of, mental aspects of playing baseball because you're not going to be good all the time. All right. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're, we're all right. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.